In the previous videos, we learned about pages. All data sits on pages. Each page in the system gets a key that is a page ID. And whatever you do, eventually you put your data on such a page. And then the system will handle that. By system, I mean it's a mix of database system and the operating system. So we learned about how to map those virtual pages from virtual memory management to physical pages. And eventually those physical pages are mapped down to devices, be it DRAM, hard disks, flash, or whatever. Well, that's nice, but now in the following, we have to learn how to map actual relations to those virtual pages. Relations is what we wanna store, what we wanna handle in the database system eventually. So how do we do that? So what is a relation? Just to remember, a relation is a set of tuples and a set doesn't have duplicates, a set doesn't have an order among the different tuples. So the question is, how do we map a relation to virtual pages? And that is the concern of the following videos. So some thoughts about that. Well, we have to linearize the tuple somehow. Of course, we have this linear address space in virtual pages. And this implies that we also have to come up with an order among the tuples. So, so we do not have an order in the relation, in the set, but the address space of the virtual pages has an order. It's a one-dimensional space, and therefore we have to force the tuples into an order. Here we say, okay, this tuple is first, afterwards comes that tuple, and afterwards comes this tuple. So we bring them into a specific order. That is what linearizing tuples is about. So this boils down to storing data values like that. We first store this 23 of the first tuple, then Albert, 45,000. And this is the first tuple, then come the values of the second tuple, then the values of the third tuple and so forth. So this red arrow here depicts the linearization, the one-dimensional order of values, the logical order in which we store the data values on virtual pages. So now if you do a select star for that table, the database will return those values in a specific order. So for example, the table you get back looks like that. So here's a table. And the misleading thing with tables is of course that it looks like as if the tuples were ordered. Here, 23 Albert 45,000 comes before this tuple, comes before that tuple. It looks like as if there were an order, but in the relation there is no order. Order is just implied by the physical organization of the database system. So this order doesn't mean anything and it sh you shouldn't exploit it in any way unless you're sure you ordered the data. So order may only be exploited or should only be exploited if you use something like that. If you wrote order by ID, for example, then it's fine. Then you know you forced it into an order and then you can make use of that order. A second case we will learn about later on is of course index structures. So most databases organize data along their primary key and, and then very often data is ordered along the primary key, at least if you're using a tree index. And then you can also exploit that, but you have to be really careful. So from, from point of view of the SQL command, you may only exploit order if you force data into an order. If you did not use any order by, then the order in which the tuples are returned is random. It depends on physical decisions that are not forced, that are not implied by the logical declarative SQL command. So be really careful. So in this example, as the database used this linearization of the data values, we will get back values in that order. But for instance, assume the database used a different order. Maybe it made a decision to first store the values of this tuple, then the values of that tuple, and then the values of that tuple. Then the individual data values are linearized like this. Then this is the order. And now if you do a select star from employees, you'll get back the values in this order. If you go back to the previous example, here it was first this tuple, 23, then 42, 77. Now it's 77, 42. Now 
here we see a different order. Okay, so as we have to make a decision on ordering, on linearizing the tuples, so why not make it more extreme? Why not make a decision to linearize individual data values rather than tuples? So this could look like that. So what this means is the linearization order goes crisscross again over different tuples. It's not that we linearize all the data values of a specific tuple at once, but rather we first store 23, then 37,000, then Rob, 77, 42, Albert, 45,000, 50,000, Peter, and then we are done. So this leads to this order for storing individual data values. And that again might mean that if we do a select star from employees, we end up with this specific order, which is again different from the previous one. So here was that, now it's 42, the tuple with ID 42 first and 2377. So how data is linearized by the database system has an impact on the order in which tuples are displayed later on, which is randomly chosen or in other words, depends on the physical organization of the database. It also depends on query processing decisions. We will get back to that. So why am I telling you all of that? Well, the point is this linearization order has a huge impact on performance, especially for very big databases. So it looks like a trivial problem, like, okay, what the heck, we pick one of the linearization orders and it's fine, they will work in either way. And yes, it's right, the linearization orders all give you the same result logically, but we will see in the following videos that it makes a lot of sense to think twice about how to linearize data values in the database system because it has huge impact on performance. And a number of startups are just based on changing this linearization order in a clever way. It has such a huge impact on performance. So what we're talking about in the following is those two mapping steps. So what are those two mapping steps, 1A and 1B? So 1A, again, is make a decision on how to linearize the individual data values. In other words, which is the order that you use to store the data values. Then comes 1B. 1B means now you have this linearization, but you still have to convert the data to binary chunks. So eventually, I mean, this is a string and this is a high level data type. That data type has to be mapped to some binary array, to some byte array. Yeah, so eventually it will end up as a byte array on such a page. And again, there are many decisions you can make here. It looks trivial, but it has a huge impact on performance. So both those steps have a huge impact on performance. And I depicted those steps as 1A and 1B, which implies that the, that the first step is 1A and 1B. However, in practice, you may also combine those two steps. Actually, those steps are often interleaved and combined into a single step. But for simplicity, I will explain those steps in two sub-steps, so to say. So, that is a mapping, relations to a linearization order, that is to byte chunks on virtual pages down, then we map that, then we map virtual pages to physical pages, that's step two, we map physical pages to devices, that's step three. So again, a textual overview on those mapping steps. 1A is to linearize from 2D relations to a 1D sequence of values. Those values do not have to be passed. Those values don't have to be mapped yet to byte arrays. That is what happens in step 1B. So in 1B, we serialize the values. So we get from a 1D sequence of values to bytes on virtual pages. In step two, we de-virtualize. So we have to map virtual pages to physical pages and in step three, we materialize, which means physical pages are mapped to storage devices. Those are the four mapping steps. And in the following, we will look at that. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look 
at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.